Hello and welcome to Theatre's Hidden Helper, Autism, Musicals and Me for the very first time ever. Uh, this is quite a big thing for me. I've never done anything where I've recorded it on the spot. I've, ma I've made basic notes for this, but basically this is my first time ever and we're going to go for it. We're going to see what happens. If anything messes up, I'm not going to take it out. This is all about being open with ourselves, uh, loving musical theatre and talking about how uh, outside things that aren't actually in musical theatre, such as autism, uh, can help us and hinder us. Um, so, uh, for the first time ever, let's set the stage and lift the curtains on a new week. So, m my name is Ben Caligari, and I'm a musical theatre performer and fan, and I'll be your host. I, I wanted this podcast to be accessible for everyone who loves musical theatre, um, and anyone who has autism and wants to share their thoughts on either subject. Um, so I've laid it out in the style of a show, which is very interesting. A show, you say? Well, let me talk you through it. We will start out with Act 1, where I'll be discussing my autism, how it helps and hinders musical endeavours, and then we'll take a quick intermission where you'll either... Um, I will put some pictures of shows that I've done or just various pictures of shows... Or you will be lucky enough to witness, um, I say lucky, I, I like putting them out there. It will be a short video clip of me covering uh, a, a musical theatre song, either on vocals or on my lovely drum kit. It will be only a short snippet because I will put the real video, the full cover, on YouTube. I will link it through the videos. And as soon as the podcast goes live, so will that cut full cover. So go onto my YouTube and check it out. It's that simple. And they will be different every week. So every week you will have a different intermission number that I will perform. It's as simple as that, as I say. Um, so yeah, that's how uh, the intermission is going to work. After this, we will crack on with the downbeat. Open the curtains on Act 2, where we will be discussing questions sent in by listeners and general musical theatre news. Um, since it's the opening night of the podcast, I don't really have that many questions from viewers. So instead I asked some of my musical obsessed friends to come up with some questions that they wanted me to answer. And if they're about musical theatre and autism, they may have been already covered in uh, Act 1. But without further ado, the curtains are opened and let's start with the show. Okay, so... Act one, here we go. Uh, first time ever, this is going to be a little bit awkward for me, because I've never done it before. So, um, autism. It's a very broad topic. And the the way I talk about it is, is going to be very different for everyone who has autism. I'm not, I, I, I don't say that in the sense of everyone is not the same, right? With autism, it, it isn't uh, a type of um, thing that is same in every person that has it. It's very different in every person. People have different stims and different ways of dealing with their autism. And only that way will work for them. And they will try other things and they may work, but they don't. Um, and that's what makes it very difficult to... <laughs> in a sense, figure out what works for us. Um, it's quite a well-known um, thing, autism, and uh, we get picked on a lot for it. And um, people will say extremely horrible things about people with autism, say they're a... Uh, I don't know how to put this, but some people will say that we are extremely different and that we're weird and odd, and I say, screw it, we are odd. I am odd. We work differently. We, our brains are wired differently to figure out things differently, to process things, to try things differently. And to those people who try and badmouth us and say that we're completely different, that is completely wrong. There are some incredibly famous people in the world that have been diagnosed with autism and are absolutely amazing at what they do. And they are absolutely helped by autism in many ways, but also hindered by autism sometimes. And that's what I'm going to talk about now, 
in the section that I'm going to talk about how it helps and hinders me in musical theatre. So, here's here's what I'm going to discuss first. So, I wanted to discuss how I learn lines because learning lines is extremely hard for me in the fact, in the sense that I struggle to learn them in a very short space of time. I can remember the thing with my autism and the way that it works is that I can remember absolutely random and ridiculous things. For example, I could tell you, I could list off hundreds of random facts that I've learnt that have no correlation to real life or what the co- conversation may be at that point, and I can just start firing them off and remember them exactly the same and explain them and strip them right down and tell you exactly how it works. However, learn you'd think that learning lines is exactly like that, but it is it is not. One way that works for me to learn um, lines is... Um, writing them out sometimes it only works in certain situations for me which is the what which is the sad part because I could be learning two different plays at the exact same time and only one um, method of learning lines will work with one of them and I'll have to use a completely other random learning lines technique for the other show um, one example is this I did um, two shows at the same time of doing a um i think it was a a gcse marked piece and oh excuse me as i said i'm not gonna edit that out um one way that helped me with the gcse piece was um cutting the lines down and learning half of a line if it was a particularly long line and then build it back up and then try and write out write the line out in my head say it and then keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and it really helped me with that however the other project that i was doing outside of school was just uh i've got to knuckle down and keep repeating them and repeating them and repeating them not breaking them down at all just learning them scene by scene by scene which is really annoying for me because it doesn't work as well in a sense I, I struggle with it and it's so funny to uh, for people who watch me trying to learn lines and they're able to pick them up really quickly and their own lines and I'm just sat there with my script just going help me please it's it's really um, it's really hard for me so it, I'm really grateful that I'm learning new techniques to learn lines and um, one technique that I did actually see on oh yeah funny me to be on TikTok um, is Turning the lines into a song. Now, this is a very odd thing because if you're in a duologue scene where there is even uh, just you and another person on stage and or other people and you turn those lines into a song, then you've got to think in your head that they've got a line before you sing the next part in your head and then uh, relay it out by mouth. And you, see, it this makes sense to me. But it may not make sense to any of you, which is perfect, because it means that as an autistic person, I'm I'm explaining my autism the right way. It's a mess. It comes out, it either comes out or it stays in my head, and then I wait to get it out um, in regards to thoughts and stuff. So yeah, if you if I write, uh, if I think of it as a song in my head, it's not going to help me at all, because I will have to stop singing uh, in my head. Um, to say a line and then wait for someone else to jump in and that will throw me completely it 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 that's one of the problems with that learning lines method method but in songs that is amazing because i uh i don't know if any of you know but if you would look on my instagram uh page i am a drummer a guitarist a pianist and a singer and a ukulelist uh, and a vocalist. I don't know if I said that actually. I probably said singer. Doesn't matter. We're Kenny Pin it in. Um, I play drums, so I find it really easy to feel the beats and when certain beats come, and when certain beats come out of nowhere, it's great because I remember when they come out of randomness um, as a drummer. So that's really helpful for when I'm actually singing on stage in a song. Um, if I have to jump in at some point at a ran- completely random point. Other people will find it a nightmare 
because they'll like they'll look down for the uh cue from the conductor and they'll be like wait for it wait for it and then you might jump in too quickly or you might jump in too late or you might get it just right it's kind of a three-way tie between what happens however being a drummer it's absolutely fantastic for me because i know exactly when to come in with those really awkward things that people just go how the hell have you done that do, do you get what i mean it's extremely weird weird for me but that's a very good perk of being a musician and a um a actor uh, in musical theatre because you can get actor musician roles so for example um a broadway production of getting the band together or getting the band back together i believe um a couple of years ago it was on broadway and a lot of the actors on there actually played the instruments and a very good example of that for uh, children and people who absolutely are crazy about andrew lloyd webber um or just a general rock lover is a school of rock um the film and the um musical had children actually playing live on stage or in scenes and i i, I saw that twice um and it was absolutely phenomenal so absolute props to those kids because it's amazing and i was in a production of it where i played the drums on stage which was a highlight of my life even though it's a school production it still counts for me it was absolutely amazing um even though the drums were on wheels and sometimes we forgot to put the brakes on which is amazing for me because then I'm freaking out in my head while also trying to look cool. Just like, what? Uh, I'm moving. I'm moving. Help. But, you know, um, we get through it. But um, that's that's why, for me, it's so easy to find those um, current, common, what I would call, um, musical. Oh, what is it? It's um, musical orients for me. Orientation is finding the really hard bits to come in and, and being able to absolutely basically nail them and i've been told that some of those bits are really hard but i find them really easy and that will be because being a drummer helps and also my autism really helps me too because my autism comes out of nowhere and a lot of the time when i have an impulse to uh, start singing it'll be on the right beat or the right note and i'll be like yes you've really helped me however then being said, with those impulses, you also get some very, very, very out of the, out of the way things where I don't know. I'll be singing in a scene, um, and I'll and I'll my I'll break my eye line just to be curious. I'll just be like, who's listening? Who's looking at me behind the wings? And and that kind of paranoia from the autism and my anxiety as well because i have anxiety as well it's great i've got autism and anxiety and they kind of merge together and form <laughs> one big picture for me um and they are helpful and they hinder performances and it is absolutely <laughs> um absolutely petrifying when they kick in because you don't know what's going to happen which is really weird with um especially musical theater um, when there are quite a lot of uh, quick turnarounds between scenes, like you come off stage, you've got a line up ready for your cue in the next scene in a different costume or maybe in the same costume with different props. And you kind of think, uh oh, I might miss this cue. But if I look behind me, there's people messing around backstage or you just watch people on stage and I will get so encapsulated in what is not supposed to be my business and i will miss a cue or like just by a couple seconds but enough to be a small notice for me but not enough for the audience um you may have a bit of noise sorry about this <laughs> i should have said this before i'm sat in my uh what i would call my room studio which is my room with all my instruments in and i'm sat right next to my drum kit so as i'm kind of um gesticulating with my hands and talking to a microphone and a computer that is not real i may accidentally knock um a symbol like that um or i might accidentally press on the bass drum pedal but please bear with me i promise you it's going to be worth it at some point um i'm just going to take a quick drink because that's been a quite a long talk for me <laughs> without a drink so yeah um i don't know what else to say 
Uh, I might intru- I might as well just introduce other bits about me. So, I got into musical theatre in year, I believe it was year six um, of my primary school. And what had happened was we were putting on a play called uh, Robin and the Sherwood Hoodies. Now, uh, that is embarrassing. Especially with year, <laughs> year six end of Leavers plays. When you get those teachers that think, you know what, I'm going to write... A, a absolutely amazing musical that will be have so many jokes for the adults in that the kids won't understand and songs that they will never get out of their heads till the day they die and maybe just maybe i'll write a title that is a play on words of a common phrase or a major motion picture and i'll make it absolutely hilarious that they cannot say it without laughing do you, it's do you get what i mean it's we we had Robin in the show with hoodies. Other people might have play on Shakespeare's plays and things. And you just think, who is this person that is sat in a room writing, right, I've got an idea for this, right? We're going to rip off Robin Hood, right? And we're going to call it Robin and the Sherwood hoodies, right? Because that's what kids are into, yeah? Hoodies and tracksuits, Nike trainers and stuff like that. But it wasn't about that. Which then makes you wonder why the hell is it called that? And I was a skunk in this production. Uh, I was skunk, I believe, skunk number five. And I had one line, and it was, What happened? Dressed in tight black tights, um, a, 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 a scout uniform as well. I mean, this, <laughs> this was not a good look for my first time on stage. And um, that's when I started looking into musical theatre, and when I went into my secondary school um, in year seven, we did Les Mis. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is one of the most famous musicals ever. Everybody loves it. And then what do you know it? I'm ill on the performance nights. Yay. What a great thing for my first big school production where I actually are oh, am really happy with what I've got to do in it. But that year six production i had a very small role that nobody knew about and i might as well explain it because i have an impulse to and it is the funniest thing that's happened to me because it was it was a problem that we had backstage supposedly fixed and then they were like yeah we didn't actually fix it we made it worse and i just kind of sat there just like You've ruined my school play. I had one line and I was about to get so many more and I did have so many more and then the microphones didn't work backstage. Oh, I'm, I'm so upset and I and I didn't get over it forever. I held it down to my thing because what had happened was there's a scene where uh, it's a blackout and Robin Hood and his merry men, or the Sherwood hoodies should I say, were... Uh, in the blackout, getting ready on stage, like all of all of them in like uh, green tights and weird little hats and stuff, and one of them with a bow, and <laughs> uh, this is so funny for me. And it was supposed to be a take on a GI Joe film that they were supposed to be this amazing military operation, and I, in the audition process, they said, right, who can do a good American accent? And I put my hand up, and I'd never done one before. And I turned around to them and they said, well, could you read this line? And I was like, yeah, sure. And uh, they said, what, do you want me to read the whole line? And I got to the first sentence in the line and they said, you've got it. Um, and the, the line was, Robin Hood and the Merry Men are on their way into battle. They are training. Robin and his friends are about to start. And I got into that sentence. And all of a sudden, I just go, yep, Ben, you've got the part. Great. Cool. We'll talk to you about it later. And it was actually a, just a voiceover part where it was in that blackout. And I was stood backstage with a microphone like I'm sat here um, with my, at the time, best friend, Will and Adam. And they were backstage crew. And I was stood with this microphone. I was shaking and I turned it on. Uh, in We did... Um, we did a couple, we did like three performances and one of them was to the um, local elderly folks home and they would come in and they would have a cream tea and stuff like that. You know, proper British things, um, fabulous things and tea and cakes and oh my God, they even had licorice all sorts. That ugh, 
oh my gosh and they they would sit there and listen to us and on that performance it was the first performance i turned the mic on and i said the i said the line and i was really happy with myself and everyone backstage all my friends were like yeah you did it well done that was really cool and then as soon as the production the the show finished i got pulled aside by the lovely sound guy uh who was sound and lights guy he would do both of them uh, and he came over to me and he said so um we've had a bit of a problem in that no one heard you because the mic wasn't on and i was like oh really I, I i did turn it on didn't i and he just goes yeah but it just didn't work and i was kind of sat there just like um okay um was it something i did um and he's like no 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 no. it's something on my end at the soundboard it's fine i can fix it for the next performance so i was like oh great i get another try at this in front of my parents and uh the audience <laughs> and the second time that we did it mic didn't work there was no power in the mic at all so the third final one i ended up shouting the line d- down no microphone at the back of the stage um just shouting just like here is here is Robin Hood and his Sherwood hoodies. They are ready. Still didn't hear me though. Even though it was a massive hall, um, nobody heard me. That was amazing. Um, and that was how I got into musical theatre because I was like, I want to do more of this. Uh, I want to be able to be on those stages and uh, make people laugh and entertain those people and just you know. Um, do something that is something that I'm naturally drawn to and now I'm able to actually pursue that further when I go into college with performing arts so that's amazing and I'm like oh my gosh this is absolutely insane I'm I'm so proud of myself and then you do show after show every year and everyone says oh that was amazing and, and no matter who you are in that show especially at um secondary school shows sorry just got to get another drink of the water no matter who you are in that show no matter if you're right at the center playing the lead or if you're in the ensemble or if you're just a backstage crew or you're one of the teachers that direct it they always people always um when you're leaving especially at my school people would always say well done and they would either give you like a high five or just a, r- a really good thumbs up and a really good smile and it it makes you feel like you're doing something worthwhile and for me with autism that's absolutely that makes me feel on on top of the moon because um being always being the one that was really struggling to fit in and do things how everyone else was doing it was an absolute amazing thing for me because i kind of felt like i was in that majority that were what what i would call uh, sort of the normies who looked like they knew how everything worked, knew how every uh, social cue worked, how what to do in these kind of situations, and I felt I'm finally with those people. Until then I realised that I don't have to want to be, because I'd always wanted to be in the big group of people who, I don't know, um, either outside of shows would stick together and they'd be the bestest friends and they'd go out to like the movies and stuff and be in that crowd but I I'm kind of learning now that that's not what it's all about as a as a um person who wants to find their way it's all about being able to learn how to stick out in a sense because we're always told oh every human being is um you know an individual no one's the same yet we're all we're all trying to force ourselves to be the same in some way whether that's all being on the same social media platform or all being a tiktoker uh, which has been told to me many times but i still refuse to do a video on it um or whether that's you know just being a person that can go outside and anyone they see just say you're right, mate. Stuff, <laughs> stuff like that, and I, 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 I kind of now say, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be who I want to be. I can be a theatre performer and be called gay, and I can't. I just look at that and I just go, 
that's your opinion. Not mine. And I don't listen to it anymore. Because especially with with autism, the one thing that you've got to understand is that with that level of paranoia that comes through from people who are negative, we latch onto it and we start to believe it if we're called it multiple times. Uh, and that told that, you know, we're not good enough and that um, so when people just come up to you and just go, ha, gay boy or like something like that and you kind of feel so pushed down by it and you can't let it go that people think that kind of thing of you and use it as an insult. You know, I am a man and I love to do what I do. I do musical theatres not to look gay, but it's because something that I am implored to do and I absolutely adore the idea of being up there and doing uh, making people happy no matter where I am in it so if you want to take something that a lot of people are proud of and use it as an insult be careful because you're not gonna do anything other than make the person that you insult not fight back but we're just not gonna care about you anymore in a sense we don't care if you think that we're idiots or we're the worst people to be around or I don't know I got told once that I am uh uh, I got told that I'm an attention seeker and stuff like that and it's no we're not attention seekers we're not whatever you want to hurl at us as an insult we are individual people who if you think about it theatres um movies like cinemas and stuff tv Without actors and stuff doing dancing and singing, there would be no entertainment industry. So when you when you insult us, it just makes us think, well, you know, we don't actually care about you anymore. But we still have to do something. Why do we have to be the ones that you pick on? There are so many people that are bullied for liking musical theatre. Because apparently that's a thing now. And... Th- those people at some point will have gone to a pantomime or something and seen people singing on stage and just sat there, right? And they've had the guts to even go and see it, right? And they insult people who like musical theatre and stuff like that because they think we're easy targets. But actually, we are some of the str- we are the strongest group of people that you will ever meet. We we are when we're in shows, we're a cast. We all come together, the sound directors, the technical support people, the the stage managers, the cast, the ensemble, the leads. We all come together and we do it because we have a passion for this thing. So don't you dare try and disrespect different members of that company for not being good enough or um, certain things about them and make assumptions about them. Because the other people in the cast will absolutely look at look down on you and you're going to make yourself feel in the long run ashamed that you've said that because we will all be if we've got them enough courage we could all be on broadway and west end stages and then you'll look back at that time and you'll text us and say hey i see you're on um broadway now do you remember me i'm from um i don't know i'm i'm from your i'm from your primary school do you remember me Oh, yeah, I do remember you. Yeah, you were the guy that used to pick on me constantly for liking musical theatre. And then I send a text back saying, Yeah, I've changed now. Um, Is there any way of getting tickets or coming backstage? Small answer for you. Hell no. You hurt us when we needed the most help ever. Especially for insults for me. I'm autistic, they hurt a lot more. And for you to just come and kind of walk in and say, hey, I want to come see you, Uh, I want free tickets and stuff like that, you don't get to ask those things of us, especially when you've been extremely rude and mean to us in the past. So we will just, if you, what I'm trying to get at is that if you are that condescending to us or in a cast and you're really... Uh, extravagantly mean to someone in that cast, we will realise, even if you've been the best of friends to us before, we don't need you. There are people who will treat us how we deserve to be treated. And if we treat you with kindness, dignity and respect, 
and you do too, and then you can like flip all of a sudden and change your opinions on everything, we will leave you behind. And that will be, in my opinion, one of the worst things to ever happen to you. Because in musical theatre, we know the importance of trust. And we know the importance of being there for people when they are not in the best of mind spaces, when they're being picked on and stuff. We have to deal with going to auditions that we may only get, I don't know, um, rarely, we will rarely get those kind of auditions. And we get rejection from those. So it may be an amazing West End Broadway opportunity for you, and we get rejected. We have friends who can help us through that. We are a very tight-knit community. And we all love each other and we respect each other. There will be things that we disagree on, like politics, etc. But we're always there for each other. And I think that's the main thing about musical theatre. No matter where you are, what I want to say is that we may not be in the same cast, we may not be in the same country, we may not be, you know, into the same styles of musical theatre. We love you, and we accept you, and we want you here with us. We want to be able to share a stage with you. It may not be possible because you may live somewhere else that we can't get to. But we are all one big family, and whatever comes at us, we fight together. We, through COVID, we've had so many theatres shut down. <coughs> Sorry about that. We've had so many theatres shut down. And especially in Plymouth, they've had a theatre that's completely shut down forever. People who work there will have their, will have lost their jobs. We scoop, we come over and we scoop them up and we help them. We don't, there's no one left behind. We care for them. By being there and raising money. Because we aren't afraid, like on stage, to put ourselves out there and embarrass ourselves to help others. We're on that stage, especially if you're doing a full-time production, loads of times a week. And you may be in a role that... You may be in a role that maybe has, like, dirty dancing, a, a nude scene, right? We're on that stage, not doing it because we want to. Well, some people may want to, but that's a different matter. We're doing those kind of scenes, especially ones that have very historical references and historical accuracies. We're doing those to enlighten you and to show you what has happened. We're, we're showing you what it's like to see those kind of things. And people may laugh at it. Um, and people may find those v jokes very funny and whatnot. We do it because it's in a script. And we love musical theatre and we love looking at scripts. And showing people live stories. And stepping out of our shoes and stepping into someone else's for the, for um, like, a t like two hours and 50 minutes. We do it because we love to... Well, in my autistic mind, I love to do acting because I can step out of my shoes, be completely calm, and change into someone else. I think I've rambled on way too much there. So I'm going to take another drink, like a long drink, and just blag this next bit, in a sense. <clears throat> so I've, t I've sort of gone on little rants. About how we are the best community to um, see in a sense of we are um, we are so strong and that nothing's going to break us down. Especially something like coronavirus. We, we pick everyone up and we just kind of go, hey, we're all here together. You're going to be absolutely fine in the long run. We're going to help and do n anything that we can. You know? Um... And I guess the other thing that I really wanted to touch on, this is on a lighter note, by the way. <laughs> um, we're going to look at props, right? I have been in so many productions and had so many different props. 
to be uh, responsible for. As an autistic musical theatre person, I will be the spokesperson for this brand campaign to get it off the ground. Do not touch someone else's props. If they're on a prop table in a little corner and that's marked seen this and seen this and it's there exactly how it is, don't go over there, touch it and have a look at it and move it around because you may break something, right? And with autism, I have to have it in an exactly the same place. If it's uh, if it's moved, I can get really antsy. Or like, is it broken? And start anxiously checking it and stuff. Just don't move it. I've seen so many um, younger kids in productions go over to the props table when it's first been put out. <clears throat> I don't know if it's in like a hall or something. Look at all of the props. See that they're all marked and that there's a teacher saying don't touch it. And they'll just reach their hand in. And maybe it's like a... A fake gun or something, because I'm pretty sure I had this during Les Mis rehearsals. Someone picking up a gun and breaking it, and it's not their gun. Oh my god, we spend hundreds on these props. And then you break it because it's not yours? Ah, It's annoying. So yes, that was my <coughs> advertisement for that sort of a campaign. If we can get that off the ground, uh, contact me. I, I am actually kidding, um, but it is something that, as an autistic person, I find really hard to deal with. If you've touched my props, oh, there's going to be hell at some point if I find out who did it. Because the way that I work, I need to find out who did it so that I can be like, and relax, and see what happened, and understand it. Um, and you know, um, I struggle... Uh, I don't normally talk about this, but I struggle with, um, I did mention this earlier, I struggle a lot with anxiety when I get on stage, and a lot of people will struggle with the anxiety of getting on stage and, like, ask people, oh, how do you, how do you de-stress before you get on stage? And I ask every, basically every uh, musical theatre performer that I've met, uh, had the pleasure of meeting, to... Ask, I take a time to ask them, how do you deal with nerves? And that's not because I want to see if they all do the same thing. It's because as as myself, being uh, extreme, heavily autistic, I need so many different ways of coping with it because it can go, it can go up. My anxiety levels can go up really high before I show, come immediately back down, and then go up for no reason at all over the smallest things and I need loads of methods to try and calm myself down granted I don't use them that much I still need them there to be able to know that in this situation in this situation where I blank on stage or um, if I corpse if I'm a dead person uh, for those of you who don't know what that term is corpsing is when you're playing a dead body um, yeah eventful stuff right and um, maybe you start laughing during a scene as that dead body when he's dead um, but yeah, if I'm, <laughs> I need to be able to have those things, uh, sort of in, in my pocket, as you would say, so that I can just whip out a technique to de-stress myself and immediately sort that out. Um, it, I'm a very anxious person in normal situations as well, just so that you know that this isn't what it's all about. It's not that I'm choosing a path to do musical theatre where I know I'm absolutely going to, uh, scare myself to death on stage it's just something that i naturally have from um uh, from different uh different settings that i've done um <clears throat> i've just had a, a big drink of water so my voice might be a lot higher from that one this will be really helpful for me um other than that i don't uh think i've got anything else to say on Act one. Other than, as I've said, we are a big we are a big family as musical theatre pals. Whatever you need, we're gonna be there for you. However we can, whether that's through a Snapchat message, whether that's through a card that we send in the post. Um, I don't know <laughs> whether we email you as like a drama teacher and say you are gonna be fine. I'm here for you. Anything that we can do. If there's anything we can do, please do. Contact a musical theatre person uh, that does musical theatre because we will help you. We, we, 
my point of view is if I have a friend that needs anything, I kind of drop everything that I'm doing and I, I look at it a very logically way and think, right, what happened to them? Uh, what kind of things have happened to them in the past? How do I help them? <laughs> I, I'm very set on helping that person if they need help. And I may not be able to do everything that I would want to, like, I don't know, um, take them out to dinner and say, oh, it's all going to be fine. Look, here's some way to de-stress or like buy them a spa break. But the best thing for someone who is in one of those states that is needing help is that you are there for them, whether you're there physically, emotionally or in or in spirit. They know that you're there for them and the next chance that, I don't know, you get to see them or they get to see you, you're going to run up to them with open arms and say, hey, we're, we're here for each other, it's okay. And we... <clears throat> uh, other than that, we want we want you to we want you to know that we will always be there, whether we lose contact, we're here. Whether we don't lose contact, we're here. If you only have us on text and we don't see each other for ages, drop us a line. We're we're always here. Uh, I I have a uh, many friends that I talk to, but I struggle with going outside sometimes. And going into big groups of people and talking to them. Especially if I don't know everyone there as well. So, whatever happens, whether you're in an awkward situation, we are there for you. We love you. We want to care for you. We will do everything that we need to to help you. This has been my <laughs> TED Talk for Autism and Musical Theatre. Act 1. See you in Act 2 after this short intermission. Hello and welcome back to the now Act 2 of Theatre's Hidden Helper, Autism, Musicals and Me. So, I am aware that I may have started to, near the end, ramble on a tad about certain things. Now, that because this is my first podcast, I'm going to leave it in because, I'm being honest with you, I rambled a bit. Um, however, now we're going to be going over some uh, questions that I've been given um about um certain pieces of musical theater uh what i'd like to be doing in musical theater uh you know anything that listeners come up with and send to me um i u- i will usually do um some kind of put it in the comments if you have a s- actually yes this is a great time now popping into my head if you have a question that you want to ask me uh it can be repeated from um a previous episode or something like that when i do the next episode, just comment it down in the uh, comment section. Uh, just pop it down and say, hey, uh, just tell me how you feel the podcast is going. And then just leave me a, a random question about either musical theatre, myself, or autism, or anything out there. Um, I, I honestly do not mind. Um, you can also go and follow me on Instagram, uh, at Ben Caligari Official, which I'll pop in the... Um, I'll pop in the description uh, where I will uh, do a um, like a question thing. I don't know what it's called. Like a question thing, um, asking you what kind of things you want me to discuss, and you can just leave it all down there. Um, other than that, let's crack on. Um, before I do crack on with the answering questions, I do want to say, at this moment, I don't know what I've put in as the intermission thing whether I've put pictures or whether I've done a cover. So if you like the pictures or the cover, please do go uh, subscribe to my channel where I'll be putting more of these podcasts out every single week and you'll get notified on that if you click the bell icon. Also, go and follow me, as I said, on my Instagram, at Ben Caligari Official, in the description. It'll make a huge difference to me and I'll be forever grateful on the stage. Um, It just makes... Make sure that you get to see different posts that I put out 
uh, on daily life and stuff about living with autism, etc. Um, but now we're going to crack on with the questions. So I actually asked uh, two of my favourite musical theatre and drama obsessed people I know. They're called Karis and Bethan. And they have sent me a load of questions. Um, so we're going to start off with questions that I got from Bethan. And I'm excited for this. So <laughs> I'm just loading up the questions now. So the first question is, who are you? Um, well, I'm only 16. I'm still figuring that out. My name is Ben. I'm 16. I'm around 5 foot 10 or 11. Um, I, I, I'm a musician. I'm a actor, performer. I like to sing. Um, I like reading a lot of books that have facts in. I like factual books. Um, I like reading factual history or, or the autobiographies, sorry, or biographies. I love Harry Potter, Star Wars, big nerd, um, which I, I love being a nerd, by the way. Um, I also really love QI, which is where I get a lot of my facts. And I listen to uh, a podcast called No Such Thing as a Fish, which I'll leave in the description as well, because they are an amazing uh, podcast to go and listen to if you're bored and you need cheering up and you want to hear some funny facts that you may not know about. Um, it's four of the uh, backstage QI elves who find all of the um, facts for QI and they will tell they each go around the room in the podcast and they each have they each say one fact that they've learned in the week that they think is either funny or really interesting and it's uh, like an hour long podcast but currently with like coronavirus and stuff it's really not that hard to find an hour where you're not doing anything productive so just go have a listen to it it i'm honestly it is the funniest thing for me to listen to when i'm like nervous or really happy just listen to in the background it is the funniest thing seriously um right okay let me just grab a drink musical theater hydration station right next to me aka a small water bottle um Going on to question two, what got you into musical theatre? Now, I did explain part of this, which was uh, in my year six play of Robin and the Sherwood Hoodies and wanting to do more stuff on a stage like that. Um, one of the other things that got me into musical theatre was um, uh, I don't uh, I came across um, this was before I had he this was after I'd heard of musical theatre and seen a musical. And I thought it was pretty cool. But what further got me into musical theatre was finding scripts. Uh, and when I was going through scripts, I found one with songs in and I absolutely loved it. Um, I can't remember what, um, what script it was. I don't remember. Um, but it was so fascinating to me. The idea of combining spoken word with, with lyrics um, and fancy upbeats and orientations and downbeats and you know all that pizzazz that comes in musical theatre and not knowing where the music's going to go next so, so especially um old musicals su older musicals such as um sweet charity uh and thoroughly modern millie uh, etc they are amazing cause they're classics they're always going to be there and i love them forever um third question what was the first show you saw now um i the first show I actually ever saw, funnily enough, was Thoroughly Modern Millie. It was uh, a UK tour and it had Karen Clifton in it. And oh my god, it was amazing. Um, the man who was portraying... Oh, I can't remember the name. This is so embarrassing. The person who runs the hotel in that musical is absolutely amazing and fabulous, by the way. Um, when I saw it, uh, it encapsulated me. There is, it's a musical slapstick, sort of, but it's a musical comedy about a girl called Millie who moves from the uh, country into the big city, um, trying to find her way, and that she's always been told, oh, I've got to uh, be able to shop at Goldman Sachs, um, you know, all of the big lifestyle things that await girls in New York City and... Then she and she's also told that she's got to um, somehow marry her boss, but in the process of that, she finds someone that she wants to marry even more, 
um, and finding what she wants to be able to do, where she wants to be able to go in the world, and that it's not all about having the riches. It's all about uh, be having fun with the people around you. And it's also um, one of the down... Not one of the down things. It's uh, one of the under underlines of the plot is um, the idea of um, human trafficking, which is actually quite sad. Um, the uh, hotel owner um, kidnaps, or I say kidnaps, gets the um, two people who work, uh, or two people in her staff to um, kidnap some of the guests who come uh, with no family members or at all, who uh, she deems aren't going to be missed, and she exports them. I say exports, I don't know if that's the right word. She flies them out to another country um, to be put to work, um, which on something that I can't remember. But it's it. although it has a dark undertone in that sense, it is a romantic musical comedy. It's absolutely lovable. If you can go see it when there's a tour going on, or an amateur production is going on um, down in your town, go and see it. Whatever it is, whatever kind of production it is, this is what I always say, it doesn't matter if it's a West End production, if it's an amateur dramatics thing, people are going to love it, whoever go and see it. A lot of people will say, oh, I want to go and see the West End one because it's got the West End cast and stuff. It doesn't matter about who's like the main person that's known for that. If you can go and see it, you should feel privileged because you're sat in a theatre where people have been working there Sorry, but they've been working their asses off trying to get this show together. And it's absolutely amazing that they've done this just so that you can pay and go and see it. And if it's accessible to you, doesn't matter if it's where it is, whether it's in London or Broadway or, or if it's close to If it's closer to you and it's cheaper, go and see it. Because they will be truly thankful that you've taken the time to go and see theirs. Because a lot of people will be obsessed with seeing the original cast, the original cast, the original cast. And especially with understudies, people, I've had people in, or I've seen people in uh, theatres that have been in a really foul mood because the original person or the person that they've come to see in that role is ill that day and they're seeing an understudy and they don't want to see the understudy. So what? The understudies have to understudy... um, two or more characters they they're working they're working so hard to learn two or more different parts of the show that could be completely different and then they get to come on that when they get to come on they deserve as much as an applause as the original cast member who's listed um you know just cuz they're understudy it doesn't make them any less worthy of that standing ovation rush that they will that you should give them at the end, you know, um, it's absolutely amazing, so that was my first show, sorry about that, first show, Thoroughly Modern Molly, uh, uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie, (laughs) um, it was absolutely amazing, um, my fourth question, dream role, uh, quite sharp to the point, well, dream role, that's something very hard for me to decide, only because, there are so many that I would dream to play, but realistically, I know I'm not going to get to play, if any of them, all of them, or I'm not going to get to play most of them, mainly because of I'm not the typecast of them, because typecasting is just a bit, you know, people see you as this thing and they don't think they that you can act differently. I've had incidents of that in school and stuff. Where I've been in like little projects for people, and they say, "Oh, well, you can play the like the nerdy one, or you can play the the uh, quieter one because all of the other ones are like bullies and stuff, and we don't think you can play that." I probably could, but you just haven't seen me doing it because I'm not a bully, you know. I anyone can play anything if they put their mind to it. That's that's my philosophy. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, my I don't know uh, if I had to name some. Uh, would possibly be, oh, it's actually m- much more tricky now. Thing is, uh, if you don't know, this is going to sound weird, but I would love to play um, any character in a production of a Starkid musical. If you do not know who Starkid is, where have you, first of all, where have you been? They have been rising up since 2019, no, 2009, sorry. Uh, <laughs> they've been rising up from the 
from nowhere in 2009 where they did a col- uh, I think it was a university production and they put it on YouTube and it blew up. It was a, a musical called A Very Potter Musical. Um, they've also done other musicals such as Black Friday, Twisted, uh, The Guy Who Doesn't Know Like Musicals, etc. I'll link their um, channel in the description so you can go and find them or you can search them up. They are amazing. Any male character in there would be a dream to play one of those because they are so well known currently within the modern musical theatre um, industry that it would be so fun to play. And also, their music, like, how do you write music like that that is so catchy? But, saying that, if I did have to play someone who wasn't in a non... If, if I had to play someone who was in a West, sorry, West End or Broadway sort of mainstream musical media kind of thing, I think that... Um, I would absolutely, positively, love to be any male character in Everybody's Talking About Jamie. I would love to be in that musical. Or, um, I would love to play either, um, I would love to, I'd actually love to play, um, Samuel Seabury in Hamilton. I think that would be a blast to do as a run. I, I just kind of I, I listened to Hamilton and then I watched it on Disney Plus and it got me back into it and I absolutely love the musical now for days. Um, I'd love to play him or any other character. Thing is with me, I don't really have a dream role that I want to play. As long as I can be in a musical and on a stage, I'm satisfied. I'm I'm not that picky. But yeah, anyone in everybody's talking about Jamie, a Starkey musical or um the other one that I said that I have now completely forgot. I am so sorry what I, for forgetting what I just said. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, what? Why did you want to start this podcast? Oh, that's a good question. I did not see that you put that in there. Um, right, this is off the top of my head, okay? Um, I, as a lot of you may have been doing in lockdown, have just been sat either at a computer or in the bed watching telly something I'm thinking you know I I could be doing something more and educating people on certain things like a lot of people there's a lot of um stigma around um certain parts of uh life and certain part of my life that has a lot of stigma around it from other people is autism and people will make like the occasional joke about it and then I have to laugh at it and say <laughs> it's not really that funny for me though um, I just wanted to be able to give people a platform where we don't have one. Because no, loads of people can do a musical theatre podcast. Easy. Just set up, I don't know, a phone recording, upload it, right? But I thought, autism and musical theatre merge so easily. And I'm kind of sat here thinking... Why has no one done this? This, like, I see people with um, this kind of thing on TikTok and stuff, but never, never, never on a podcast. So here we are. My dream was born. Theatre's Hidden Helper, Autism Musicals and Me is now open for business. And I'm gonna, I will be discussing, as I said, autisms, musicals and me. I don't know why I said autisms, but it's just funny for me. Autism, musicals and me. Um... I'll have a a big announcement at the end, though, because this is something that no one has ever done with a podcast before. Um, So if you wait till the end, you're going to hear something that you will never possibly hear on a theatre podcast anywhere. Okay, so that's why I wanted to start this podcast. And I wanted something fun to do that other people might find fun in listening to. Um, The last question that Bethan had for me was, how does having autism impact you? As I've said earlier... It impacts me in a lot of ways in how I learn, how I read things, how I um, process things. One of the big things that I haven't mentioned yet, autism affects me with overcomplicating. I overcomplicate things quite a lot, and that's also to do with anxiety. But I love how my autism does this to me. It helps me to overcomplicate things when sometimes they don't need to and sometimes they really do. Um, I don't really know how to explain it better. I might explain it in another podcast in the autism thing. 
but it really helps me to overcomplicate things and sometimes it just works out. It impacts in how I go out, how I look at the world, how I get up in the morning, how I conduct myself. Like I have to have a sort of routine of what I know what to do. Um, uh, I, I, I really struggle with not knowing what to do next, um, which is really hard for me. Um, and I'm I'm really happy that I'm opening up about it now because um, it's a lot of aspects of autism are really hard to deal with in my perspective fr- from my point of view. And if people don't know about it, and um, when they're when they have the chance to uh, research autism but actually don't take the time, it really annoys me. So like when we have um, people come into schools and say hey it's uh it's world autism day here are the famous people that have it here's what it can do to certain people uh, and how they think uh, and you can they ask people to keep an open mind of people like that i've seen people come away from those assemblies laughing about it and it really annoys me and that's one way that it impacts me because people have a stigma to it and i just don't want that stigma we love you all why don't you love us back you know that kind of thing we don't care about our autism we we don't need to fit in i don't need to fit in i don't want to feel the need to fit in i'm happy with being myself but in the same sense we all we want to do is be accepted by people and when we are we love it because it knows that we know that we're doing something right but i re- I, me personally i don't know about anyone else that has autism but i really struggle when people don't accept me for having the autism and they think they can change it and stuff when people uh don't desert you after you've told them <laughs> that you have autism i had a struggle with that i didn't know if when i told people in my year group that i had autism i didn't know if they were still going to want to be friends with me thankfully a lot of them were really nice to me open arms and everything and they accepted me for them some people i don't know about um because i know some people do laugh about it but for those people that um have stick stuck with me when i've had problems with autism and stuff and they haven't known it and when i actually told people that i had autism thank you so much for sticking with me it means so much to me honestly um uh, you all know who you are i'm not going to give you the embarrassment of me reading it out on the podcast but you are amazing and i love you all um so that was all the questions from bethan i need a drink now really dry i need a drink Plus, I'm doing this. I have a fan next to me, right? This is how complacent my autism is. I have a fan right next to me. And I've just hit a tambourine by accident on my drum kit. Forget about that. I've got a fan behind me. It's 22 degrees. And we've never had this kind of heat currently in the coronavirus thing. I have refused to put it on because I cannot be bothered to get up. A lot of people would be like that. I don't know if that's my autism kicking in or not. I don't care. I'm hot. I'll, I'm hot currently. I'm hot currently. I'll stick the fan on after it. It's also because I worry if it's going to pick up on the mic. But that doesn't matter anymore. Um, now, um, we've got questions from Karis now. And she's given me a couple. The first one is let me think. Guessing that's not a question. But I will. I'll give you about, what, like five seconds? Okay, here we go. I actually don't know if that's been five seconds or not. But that's enough silence. It makes me feel really awkward. Favourite musical theatre song? You are asking me to choose from millions, a catalogue of millions of songs. My favourite. Uh, I'll give you a I'll give you a couple that I absolutely adore. Um, anything from Jersey Boys or Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Because... Uh, I love jukebox mu- bleh, I love jukebox musicals like pra- um, T- Tina Tina Turner musical, uh, beautiful uh, the Carol King story, and Jersey Boys. Funnily enough, I do like Mamma Mia, but I've not been that enticed to the stage production. I don't know why, but anything from Jersey Boys, Beautiful or t- Tina, if you play that, I will be able to just sing it to you, and just sing along. Even if not wanted. I'll just be there. The awkward guys just singing along to it. 
when everyone else is just staring at me, just like, what the hell are you doing, mate? Um, a specific song, um, I'd probably have to go with, oh, this is so hard. Um, <clears throat> I'm just having to peek because I can see on my shelf that um, I've got some musical scripts. So I'm just looking at those for sort of inspiration. I can see Dear Evan Hansen, um, Book of Mormon. I love Book of Mormon. Um, actually, that being said, uh, favourite musical theatre song uh, is either I Believe from the Book of Mormon. Go listen to it. It's amazing. Or um, one of the most well-written songs, I think, is Yorktown. Uh, the world turned upside down from Hamilton. I did the I played the drums on that for my GCSE piece, and is uh, I can't reveal as much or show you a clip of it. But uh, the school is my school is putting that a video of me playing that for a virtual concert that they're doing. So if you're at my school, stay tuned and I'll put that up at some point once they've released it. Um, I drummed Yorktown through the whole thing for my GCSE piece, a uh, performance piece. And I think I did pretty well. It's one of my favourite songs because I love the instrumentation. Anything by Lin Manuel Miranda is so well written in how um, certain underlying melodies are in every single song that has that same theme, which is amazing, especially with Hamilton and In the Heights. Um, anything by Lin Manuel Miranda has been well written. So it's I Believe by Book of Mormon. Yorktown, the world turned upside down from Hamilton. And actually, I'm just going to. I'm just going to load up um, <laughs> iTunes. I'm going to look through which songs I've played the most. And I can choose from that. Um, I would actually have to go with um, an old classic. It's not one that I perform, but I love listening to it. It's from Sweet Charity, and it's Rich Man's Frog. Now, it's not got any lyrics to it, but Wow. I I love that kind of that kind of style of music in um that song. It's absolutely incredible. Um also Never Get Not Getting Married Today, a uh, company. Brilliant song. Made for female and they switched it recently in London. Um and I absolutely love that song. So there's like a couple of picks for me. Um now we're going to have a look at the next question. A role you would love to play of the opposite gender. What a good question. Of the opposite gender. Hmm. This is, this is actually going to stump me now. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I don't know what to do for this one. Um, let's say... Hmm. Actually, no question. Millie from Thoroughly Modern Millie. Hands down. That would be amazing to play. Actually, going back on the uh, favourite songs things, add uh, The Brotherhood of Man from uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Even Trying. Uh, that's an amazing song. Sorry about that. My voice just nearly uh, broke out, so I'm taking another sip. Of Musical Water. Um, next, a role you would love to play but never could. Could link to the top one. Well, a role that I'd love to play, but I don't think I would ever get the opportunity to. Um, I would say, um, Sweaty Eddie from Sister Act. Um, but I'm going to have to go with uh, Seaweed from Hairspray. I don't think I would ever get the chance to play him. And I love Run and Tell That. And I love his storyline. So that would be my role you would love to play. But probably never could. Um, have you ever stage doored? Who has been one of your favourite people you've met there? Okay. I'm going to tell you two stories. Um, I went to see Waitress uh, in London when it was still open. Uh, if you went to see it, it was an amazing... If you, it was amazing. I hope you can agree. If you didn't go and see it, there is a tour that has been postponed, I believe. But it is nevertheless a tour going on of the UK. Go and see it if you're in the UK. Um, it. 
I went to the stage door and I met um, Nathaniel Morrison, and he was in the ensemble. Now, when I got to the stage door, he looked at me and he said, "Do I know you?" And I was like, uh, "Do you?" Uh, and he said, "Do I follow you on Instagram? Are you that Ben Caligari official guy?" And I said, "Yeah, that's me. How how the hell do you know that?" This was at the time when I was still only trying. I didn't have that much of a following. And he said, I follow you on Instagram. You're amazing. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And I didn't, I went to that waiting to recognize him. But he recognized me somehow. I I, I do not know how that happened. But I, I, it was one of the most, my favorite memories of going to stage door ever. And I will never forget it. So thank you, Nathaniel Morrison. Um, he does the West End Gospel Choir, actually. Go and check them out. They are incredible. So do go check them out. However, second, um, I uh, went to see Everybody's Talking About Jamie um, ages ago, uh, near when it first opened, and I got to meet Luke Bayer, um, who is an amazing actor, by the way. Um I met him backstage, and I f- and I thought, oh my god, I've met all the uh, everybody's talking about Jamie Cast. I've met Michelle Michelle Visage. I've met everyone, um, and I thought this is an amazing day for me. Now, then, right, then, <laughs> then I saw, um, hang on, I've got to try and remember this story right. Um, <clears throat> it's really hard for me to remember this story. Um, some time passed, and I and Luke was cast in uh, a small off West End at the Southwark Playhouse play called Fiverr, uh, the the life of a five pound note, as it goes through people's hands and it's being used to buy things and stuff, and where it ends up. Um, I went to see that, and somehow, somehow, he face recognised me. You know, like a face re- facial recognition on an iPhone. He he looked at me and he said. Did I see you at Jamie? And I said, and I said, yeah. And he was so nice, and we had a full-on about ten, fifteen-minute conversation before he actually went in to go and get ready for the show, because we were hanging around a bit, because um, they have a, a lovely bar um, in the Southwark Playhouse. And he was so nice to me, and he was so nice to my mum. Um, and then we saw Fiverr, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, and to this. I asked him to sign a party popper he gives he gave to me in the show after it was like pu- uh, pulling a party popper in a party scene and I asked him to sign it and I recently won a um a Zoom call with Stage Door London uh, go and check their Instagram account out just type up Stage Door LDN I think that's it um and I won a giveaway for a, a group Zoom meeting with 10 pe- 10 other people for a mini exclusive concert over Zoom uh, by Luke and a Q&A session and he recognised me and I showed him the party popper and I could see in his eyes that he recognised it and I, but I don't know if he rem- remembers it as a good memory or a bad memory but either way it was absolutely hilarious and if Luke is actually watching which I doubt he would be but if he does end up thank you so much for being so welcoming to me and so nice and so kind to uh, your following. Um, I'm just going to look up the next question because my phone locked. Um, here we go. Um, what do you think are common misconceptions about autism? Um, where do I start? Uh, one common misconception about autism is that it affects everyone the same. It doesn't. There are th- there are stims that will. Uh, there are people can uh, autistic people have like stims. And we have different ways of thinking. And because we have different ways of thinking, it means that it's not the same in everyone. Not everyone has the same stims. Not everyone has the same way of working things out. Because we all go into different professions and stuff. Um, there have been studies to show that autistic people are more intelligent. Um, and a, a lot of intelligent people, or a lot of... Um, Autistic people go into quite logical professions. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone goes into a logical profession. We all split off and go our separate ways. And that's the big misconception around autism, I think. 
another misconception, which is just a little bit adding on from earlier, is that we're different. Right? Everyone says, oh, well, you're different, so you can't, you know, you're diff you're a different, you're different to us. Hello. Everyone is different. If we were all the same, we'd look the same. Hair would be the same, eye colour, everything. Right? So you can't use that argument on us. We're just the same as all you. We we love to have a laugh. We love to talk. We love to socialise. We do actually struggle with socialising though. If we don't know people that well. Definitely I do. Um, if I don't know someone that well. I'll struggle to talk to them. Now that means I'm a tiny tad bit awkward at stage doors. But when I see people more than once. They kind of understand it. Um, but you know. If you know that someone's autistic. And... You can see them on their own. You can go up to them and ask them, do you want to talk and get to know each other? Because you will find a really good friend in an autistic person. An equally good friend, whether they are autistic or not. Okay? We're not that different. We're not different. Everybody thinks we are, but we're not. We're just the same as you. We love, As I said, we love to talk. We love to talk about things that we love. Find common things, common ground. Just talk to us. We're really friendly when you get to know us. Um... Uh, the second to last one is would you say musical theatre has helped you express yourself hell yes I used to be so shy um, ages ago and I'm really not that shy now if you come up to me and talk to me and stuff I won't I'll just f struggle to think of things to say but it won't mean that I'm not enjoying it um, I do try my best a lot of the time um, it has helped Musical theatre has helped me express myself because um, I don't know if uh, followers know this, but my friends definitely do. I uh, was a victim of uh, what I would say is actually, no, let's re say that. I am a survivor of domestic abuse. Um, my biological father, or I would know him as an idiot, um, <laughs> but my bi biological father w uh, was abusive to me and it made me feel like I wasn't good enough and stuff like that. But now. I can express my uh, feelings and let my emotions out through uh, movement um, and lyrics and song and being able to step out of my own shoes and feel different in another person's shoes, if you get what I mean. I mean, it was a, ho it was a horrible thing to go through. However, I'm a survivor and I'm proud of it. I'm proud that I came out and I'm proud that I'm a much better person than he is. I, I am not defined by that. I am who I want to be and I'm going to express myself whenever and wherever I feel like it, which is an amazing thing to have. Um, and other people who struggle to express themselves, go have a look at musicals, okay? We, As I said before, we're accepting and we love everyone. All you need to do is respect us. We respect you. If you want to open up to anyone, do it. I mean, hey, my... Um, on my Instagram account, uh, I've linked my uh, Instagram account email and my direct messages aren't blocked. So if you want to talk about things like autism and open up, my direct messages are always open for anyone who's struggling. So please, if you are struggling or you need some advice or help, please don't hesitate to contact me. I will get back to you really quickly. <laughs> um, finally, one piece of advice you would give to someone struggling talk about it i know it's really hard for someone like me i really struggle to talk about my feelings but when i do it is completely for the better it will seem daunting to talk about someone or talk about something that is upsetting you or someone that's upsetting you or anything that is really making you anxious or worried or nervous or sad i promise you as we always say if you talk to someone not anyone, but if you talk to someone who you trust and know will keep it in confidence and you know who will support you through whatever you're struggling through, you have found a winning person to talk to. If you just open up to only one person, it doesn't have to be massive people, just one person and talk about it. My direct messages are always open and so should really good friends. They should always be willing to talk to you and help you through something that you're struggling with. All right, so we've got through all of the questions for that. So thank you, Karis and Bethan, for those questions. You're amazing. As I said, 
leave uh, comments or questions for me for the next podcast in the comments section on this video. Or, as I said, I'll be putting out a question story on my Instagram, at Ben Caligari Official. Um, if it's not showing up as a story, because they get deleted after 24 hours, if you go onto my profile, there will be something that is either called Secret Project or um, Theatre's Hidden Helper Podcast. It'll be on my highlights. You'll be able to find all of them there. You'll be able to see all the uh, info and stuff. And I've got a really big announcement at the end, as I've been saying this whole video. So stick around and you'll find that big announcement. So... Now we're going to talk about some theatre news. We're going to talk about some theatre news. That's just a really weird thing that I like to do. You know, like when they transition. Okay, I get it, it was awkward. Let's move on. So, what's been happening in musical theatre news recently? Well, um, a lot of people may know this, but Alice Fern, um, who's a really well-known West End actress, currently portraying Captain Beverly Bass, and others in we in Come From Away. Uh, she has played Elphaba in Wicked. She has currently started up a streaming sort of uh, musical theatre show where she interviews certain people in musical theatre and there'll be performances from her uh, on a show called Intermissions. I will link that in the description under the news little bit that I'll put there um, to go and see. You do have to purchase a ticket. Um, but it is well worth it. Um, I watched the first one with um, Sean Aiko and Alice Fern, and she had guests such as Jodie Steele. It was amazing. Um, it was just mind blowing that you can do that in lockdown. Um, absolutely amazing. Props to her cast and team. It was absolutely amazing. Um, also, um, on the topic of amazing things. Star Kid has had some pretty big news a day ago from when I'm recording this, or a couple of days ago, or a week ago, whenever you're watching this. Star Kid members Joey Richter and Lauren Lopez, who acted against each other as um, Ron Weasley and Draco Malfoy, Malfoy, sorry, in uh, the A Very Potter musical franchise, I've just announced their engagement. This is amazing news. Everyone ships them together. They're an amazing couple together. So to you guys, I wish you all the best of luck. It is the most amazing, one of the most amazing pieces of news in Starkid history. It blew up, literally. Um, Starkid have had so many amazing things um, and so many amazing cast members. And to see two amazing cast members engaged, I mean, for every Starkid... Mega fan. It's a dream come true, to be honest. Um, yeah. Um, that's two pieces of news. Let's see how many I can also butcher. Um, here we go. So, Frozen just, um, released who they're casting in London. Um, that's a big announcement, to be honest. Um, I'm just trying to find where I wrote it. Um, I I rest I listed the cast down. Um, so uh, I'm just trying to find it. Here we go. So the cast. So we can see the cast. So we've got Samantha Barks as Elsa and Stephanie McKeon as Anna. That is amazing pairing. We've got Craig Gallivan as Olaf. Oliver Ormson as Hans of the Seven Isles. Obiama. Obiyama as Kristoff, Richard Frame as Wesselton, Ashley Bershall as Sven, Michaela Jade as Sven, and we have a lot of other cast members in the ensemble. If I read that out, I'm going to go over my time limit. I'm so sorry about that, but um, go to their webpage. It's frozenthemusical.co.uk, and you can see the full list of cast there. Uh, they announced it a couple days ago, so it's relatively new to me, uh, but it might be like a week old. Uh, when this gets up or when you watch it, as I said. this All of these pieces of news is amazing. We've got someone doing a musical theatre show in lockdown with social distancing measures. We've also got a very famous couple getting engaged in Starkid. And then we've got the full cast of Frozen, the musical, on the West End. This is absolutely incredible week for uh, musical theatre news and musical theatre fans, of course. One thing I will point out... 
on Disney Plus now streaming is Hamilton, the American musical. It is about the tale of Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton and how his life portrayal from do- from being a illeg- born uh, illegitimately um, and ru- uh, sailing to America to become one of the most arguably famous or infamous, as some people may put it, um, members of uh, the um, U.S. government of that era. He worked alongside, he became George Washington's white-hand man. He had a massive feud with Thomas Jefferson, um, made some amazing friends, and started America's first bank. That is pretty impressive. However, he did die at the hands of someone who was going to become vice president. Uh, Aaron Burr. Now, they had a bit of a rocky relationship. Hamilton always fighting for what he wanted and really putting himself out there and Burr always waiting for what for it to come to him. Uh, and the only time that Burr tries Hamilton's way of thinking and trying to get things done quickly, um, he ends up killing the, one of the most famous Americans to ever live and it ru- completely ruins his career. I hope I haven't given too much away. There's a lot in that musical that I haven't just covered. So go on to Disney Plus and do go and watch it. It is well worth the time watching it. It's a very long musical. However, it's all in hip hop and rap. And oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> it is the one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen, as I've said, um, with Yorktown. Um, however, we're going to have to draw this uh, this first opening night to a close. It's been amazing for me to open up finally and talk about this thing. There is going to be another episode every week. That is really cool. So after six weeks, you'll have six podcasts. Don't know why I need to explain that, but I felt like I needed to. Um, this is uh, My name is Ben Caligari from Theatre's Hidden Helper, Autism Musicals is Me. I would usually end this now. However, I have a really exciting opportunity slash announcement to make are you ready i don't think you are here we go so when you listen to uh interviews and stuff you always see the stars being interviewed but you never see really the fans so here is an opportunity for you to be interviewed on my podcast i want to get to know every single person that is into musical theatre. I know that is not possible, but I want to get to know everyone that I can who is into musical theatre, learn about them, why they love musical theatre, and start building connections between people. I will also, hopefully, if I can, talk to some people who have been on the West End. I'm working on that currently. Stay tuned with me. We're going to have a lot of exciting things. But if you would like to be on the end of every pod or on what end of one podcast talking about why you love musical theatre getting some time to explain things about musical theatre who you love in it what you would love to do where you are currently in your stages of becoming in or getting into musical theatre drop me a line if you would like to be on a podcast explaining why you love musical theatre for a short interview please go on to my inst- instagram page uh, at ben caligari official it will be on the screen hopefully now and it will also be in the description of this video Um, on there you can either direct message me on instagram or send me an email i know nobody does that anymore but if you would like to do email me on that button just click it and it will automatically take you to email me Uh, make the subject of it something along the lines of hey i want to be on your next podcast talking about musical theater or anything like that i will get back to you i will choose people for different episodes Hopefully, all of you that want to will be on an episode of the podcast. I just need to figure out who will be on which one. Um, Choosing people in order of how how they submit it in. So, basically, in that email, I'd like you to put these two things. I'd like to put your uh, first name and why you want to be on the podcast and what you would like to do on the podcast. Even though it will be in an interview... You get to basically speak freely on musical theatre, which I think is an amazing opportunity for some people who I'm trying to give a platform to because we don't usually see that. You can see people going to stage doors and stuff, but you never see main theatre people in the spotlight, really, other than a little cameo at a, um opening night film saying, oh, how how was the opening night of this musical for you? So I want to give you a, pu- um, a, a platform. So do email me. Tell me why you want to be on the podcast. Simple as that. Or direct message me. It's that simple. All right, guys. This has been Ben Caligari signing off on Theatre's Hidden Helper. 
Autism Musicals and me, the Opening Night Podcast, and I will see you very soon in another musical week!